Meanwhile, in the Smash Tower. And we are back for more of the live space weather broadcasts. Doing strictly space weather on this one. This is not a space weather plus, if that makes sense. Looking at the sun at 171 angstroms, we see a giant filament erupting as we make the video. In the southeast, we will be watching this throughout the day and making at least one second video. As we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So there's the 171 view of the south, but even more interesting than that filament is up here in the north. A possible sunspot forming at a very high latitude. It's way up here somewhere. And uh, it's pretty tough to see in this view, but you will see an obvious bit of magnetism in the colorized magnetogram, which we'll look at next. To zoom in even farther. There we go. And there's that northern view. Again, some, some areas of serious magnetism going on up here. And we saw a crazy flux in the GOES magnetometer also, so stay tuned for that also. And you see this area of green up here? That's just a sudden magnetic formation. Also some organized magnetic fields in these regions. We're looking at about 10 hours of solar activity here on December 10. Here's the equatorial region in colorized magnetogram. You see some areas of magnetic complexity going on there on both sides of the equator. And there's the south. So a few spots that could suddenly turn into sunspots, folks. And 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 71. Let's get into some, some weird data right after we look at this filament close up. Check out the 304 angstroms view. There's the newest image of that filament in the southeast. It's a pretty good one. And since we already looked at colorized magnetogram, we'll just ignore the fade out. Now we see a cratering of the measurements at the GOES 16. So the GOES 14 remains in a fairly nominal electron flux level, but we see a cratering here of the GOES 16, as if it's entering and exiting the Van Allen belt, an indication that the Van Allen belt itself has moved and that's the way that kind of works. We won't get into super in-depth into how that all works because we've got to finish the video and make another one yet today. Relativistic electrons are still in a moderate level. And uh, here we have this. They're, they're actually citing this arc jet start and arc jet end, uh, which is the sort of thing that happens when uh, the satellite plunges through the atmosphere or through the Van Allen belt into and out of the Van Allen belt, etc. So there you see that going on there, the uh, the GOES-16. They're actually citing arc jet start and arc jet end for the missing data. So this is not your average CCD bakeout. This is uh, more of a real change in the electron flux. So an interesting series of things going on there with the electron flux and the magnetometers. If you're interested in what a magnetohydrodynamic arc jet is, we will eventually place links in the description. It's, it's typically a propulsion term in any case. Here's the Gong 2 data. One hour, 38 minutes old. And we are approaching 
a current sheet polarity crossing in the next 48 hours. So now this is going to this is going to continue to increase in volatility here over the next at least throughout the day today. So that could suddenly be sped up or it could even be slowed down depending on the location of the strongest fields. And without getting into an in-depth analysis of that, as it's not particularly relevant at this juncture, let's look at the real-time solar wind, which is currently at a phi angle of... Our protons are oriented at an angle of about 242 degrees there. So, now, at this same time as this arc jet event slash dip in the electron flux, change in the, in the range of the Van Allen belt, for whatever reason, we see a massive flux in the BTBZ, the angle changing entirely. Uh, total power not really changing too much. That's the BT, the black line up top. But the, uh, the BZ, in other words, which field is affecting the overall situation, completely shifted south to north and back to south. And the phi angle reflects that as well. A small proton increase there. It looks like we got all the way up to nearly 100 protons per cubic centimeter, but only for a very short period. Current reading 4.82. And we see an uptick in the solar wind speed over the past eight hours there, up to 439 kilometers per second. And uh, that is not causing a big effect on the magnetohydrodynamics of the planet. There's the data from ACE. Let's look at the magnetohydrodynamics, at least as shown as, at least as calculated by University of Michigan Geospace Model V 1.5. And this does take a lot of variables into account, folks. If you want to read about it, head to this page, Geospace Magnetosphere Movies, and. Uh, Scroll to the bottom, click Details, read about the Space Weather Modeling Framework. So not a lot going on, and this is four hours of data here, so this is after that small uptick. Got a little bit more organized fields here. Now let's look at the geospace ground magnetic perturbations from the poles. And indeed, again, to cite Howard, we see very limited data possibly coming from Siberia there. I'm not totally sure on that one. Seriously, somebody email University of Michigan and ask them if they have legit data from Siberia. Also, we see uh, the Antarctican Pole, the South Pole, is clearly uh, seems to be a little bit centered more toward the Southern Indian Ocean than to the geographic South Pole. Here's what it looks like from the globe perspective. And you see it, it's extremely, the North Pole, the North Poles, the perturbations are clearly on the Canadian side there, as opposed to the Siberian side. Keep in mind, these are changes in the field that we're measuring. We're measuring changes in the field, not the field itself. As it's delta B, meaning difference in the B field. So, and we're measuring that in nanotesla. I'll let that play through a second time. Now, folks, we're obviously not particularly thrilled about bringing news of geomagnetic pole shifts. But, hey, the truth is the truth. So, there it is. Demonetize that. Next, we'll look at six hours of the ionosphere. And the ionosphere is looking extremely charged up on the nighttime side. It's getting very homogeneous. And with, with the small increase in solar wind here, we would expect this to get back to a, a little bit more of a, what we would call a normal range. But the South Pacific anomalies continue to go on, and we see huge charge disparities there. sudden charge disparities, really. And, uh, yeah, so there's the ionosphere movie. 
Let's look at the latest image. By the way, this does give you some idea of how to aim your radio antenna. Believe it or not, folks. Now, the current situation is looking pretty normal. Uh, and it's uh, kind of late when we're making this video at 614. And we've been making them live, by the way. So if you're not viewing them on Twitch.com and you want to see them instantly as they're made, Twitch.com slash smash a mash will direct you to the correct location. KP has been jumping up and down in between 1 and 2 here for the past uh, 12 hours. And we're going to skip cosmic rays today. We see no earthquakes over a 6 magnitude. Let's scroll up the list. Small deep quake at Puerto Rico. 4.4 deep quake in Indonesia. A deep quake at Peru. That one at a 4.9 magnitude. Which actually is one of the larger of the past 24. And we've shortened the earthquake segment to compress time. And this video, it's titled differently as the content is constantly ever-changing, vanishing and or reappearing. Here's another quake at Chile, 111 kilometers depth and a 4.4 magnitude. There's a quake at New Zealand. Let's take a look at that spot as a criminal investigation has opened up about people dying at the volcano. Now the volcano is up here in the in the Bay of Plenty. But this quake was right there. And it looks like some towns. Please leave a comment if you felt that quake. And let's head back to the list. Nothing to write home about when it comes to quakes. The largest of the past 24, I think, just occurred. Basically, as we did show prep here at New Caledonia, 5.6 magnitude. And we've been seeing mid-Atlantic quakes. Here's where the pressure systems are located, and we're just going to move on after we let this display for a moment. Please enjoy the, so the song stylings of Edward Peel. And that's what you call bumper music, folks. Let's talk about our newest whiteboard. It features the question, is there a, quote, mantle? What is it made of? How is the Earth's magnetic field generated? And where does the Earth's electron availability come from? And is it related to the hydrogen at the deepest boreholes? Now, I've, I've heard some interesting theories about this, and I'm interested in entertaining all of them. <laughs> uh, but, man, there sure are a lot of electrons out there. What, what say you? Please leave a comment. Let's talk about the White Island eruption. This volcanic eruption that killed at least five people. I'm not exactly sure what the total body count is, but in any case, there's where it's located. We've placed it on Google Maps here. There's where the location of that is. And I don't know why it's moved its location. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so much junkware. So little time to be wasted by more junkware. Anyway, police launch an investigation into that one because... Uh, well, it looks like eight people are still missing. Not good. So we're probably at a body count of 13, sadly. And guess what? People weren't supposed to be there because uh, the volcano alert level was raised. And this is totally inappropriate music for this. Anyway, 31 people got injured. 27 have very serious burns. When alert levels get raised for volcanoes, folks, please don't go to the volcanoes and Pitch a tent there. Don't have a barbecue, because you might become the barbecue. 
Let's look at the list. Starting with Mount Aso, producing a 7,000 foot ash plume. Please don't fly over it in your ultralight. Don't even fly your drone over it, as you'll probably murder your drone. Explosive activity continues at Sakurajima, producing an 11,000 foot plume. Sanjiang Api, flight level 8,000. Takono, flight level 6,000. Don't fly over it, period. Fuego, exploding 17,000 foot plume there. Revenador, exploding 15,000 foot plume there. Sab and Kaya, although humans are still producing one trillion times as many carbon emissions as volcanoes, which I'm not sure how that's being measured, but in any case, Sab and Kaya exploding, producing a 27,000 foot ash plume, and Nevada State Chile and volcanic ash, not identifiable from satellite data. It could be cloudy, it could be not there, who knows? Here's where stuff is located in the solar system. It's 1012. Or I should say, <laughs> I should say December 10. It's December 10. That's the way Microsoft's default states it. So anyway, there's where things will be in a week in the solar system. Cheers. By the way, we're going to be making some new music. So look for some possible collaborations with viewers and so on. If you haven't read the comments, check the comments. Perhaps there's stuff about stuff like that. Mars just rose. And there's going to be a planetary pileup. Here, let's show the viewers. Planetary pileup coming today. Mars, and then Mercury, and then the Sun, and then Jupiter, and then Saturn, and then... Everybody in astrology is going to freak out. And Venus and Saturn are like hanging out. Anyway, let's move on to more information here. As we're trying to do strictly the space weather, let's talk about our mission real quick. It's to assist, study, and report on the formation of a unified theory of physics to raise the awareness of the general public of the relationship between space weather. Welcome to space. All your weather comes from space. Anyway, we're trying to inform people of those uh, connections. <laughs> to connect and consult with media organizations, hence our existence on these videos. To demonstrate cutting-edge proof-of-concept solutions to problems, such as growing plants indoors. To publish scientific papers in all kinds of different disciplines. To assist mankind, no matter what the adversity is. And to not be ossified in our beliefs. If you support those brilliant ideas, follow us on other places as well as YouTube, such as Twitch, BitChute, Gab, Minds, even on Instagram. Because Facebook is more than happy to put up our concerns about Google. So, you know, we there's there are some critiques on the Instagram page about Google, let's just say. So check that out. By the way, yesterday's space weather video was demonetized. And if you're wondering why, we don't know. And I'm not going to read my quote until my second video of the day. So look for that. Man, the Mediterranean is full of lightning. It seems like a bad day to be an economic migrant. Did I say that? Oh my gosh. Is that too controversial for Twitch, YouTube, BitChute, Twitter, Gab, and other silly social media sites? Here's a U.S. Doppler radar, and it is undermining me. You are undermining me, U.S. Doppler radar. Darn ya. As I was going to go ride a bicycle off-road today, looks like that's a bit canceled. But hey, look on the bright side. It means more content. And more bloviating. And, oh, no, we've got a form resubmission. It's all good. It's the U.S. water vapor map. It's part of our value-added services. We include this even though it's space weather because all your weather comes from space. 
I don't know if you're aware. Cosmic forces create the weather, not mankind. Here's a here's an image of this crazy convergence zone over western Iowa, where two two giant boomerang-sized chunks of dry air smash into each other, and mash into each other, and bash the moist air into the trash into each other. They smash, mash, and bash that moist air right into the trash. Check it out. Massive pressure gradients. Please leave a comment if you've flown on a plane north to south or south to north over those massive pressure gradients. Also, please leave a comment if you've flown a plane and you understand the first thing about atmospheric physics, such as the difficulty in creating two kilometer wide chemtrails. In any case, there should be some fascinating cloud formations, including lenticular clouds, in some of these regions. Now, lenticular clouds are one of the rarer meteorological phenomenon you'll see out there. So if you get a photograph of one, send it to us, and we might show it on the channel. Let's look at the jet streams of the Western world. Got to tilt it so we can see Alaska and Europe a little bit better. And please leave a comment if you're viewing the videos from South America, and I highly doubt it. Jet stream is splitting apart over the Atlantic Ocean. And it looks like it's going to make for some cold weather in the Caribbean, actually. In any case, talk about extreme meridional jet stream flow. The mainstream science media is talking about it, too. Almost as if they're having to mitigate their nonsense about the way the climate works. And we're not going to totally get into it in this episode, as this is more of the, more of the real stuff, not a critique of the fake stuff. Anyway, if you're in agreement with our mission, please support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash smashamash. The real source of funding for these videos. Not to be confused with YouTube. The real source of annoyance for our organization. By the way, we're also on PayPal. If you don't like Patreon or whatever, you can do one-time donations on PayPal. And by the way, the gold membership on Patreon, where you'll get things like free music ringtones and other sorts of tidbits is $9.99 a month. So please help fund the channel. And if you're just strictly viewing on YouTube, please uh, press like and subscribe. And check this out. We did a live stream earlier. Because uh, space is fake. And we're glad we roped you in with all this NASA nonsense. And thanks for, smas thanks for smashing Smash Team. Thanks for being such a smashing crew, Smash Team. And we're going to look at the animation of 304 Angstrom's view before we close this thing out. As it is a, a bonus feature. As there's a giant filament down here, and we're going to capture it. Actually, there, there's one on both sides. Check it out. That one could actually be a small coronal mass ejection, folks. Not likely to be aimed at your backyard, though, as it's very, very far to the south, very, very far to the east. Not to say that it couldn't end up in your backyard, but it's probably not. This one down here remains suspended, it looks like. And look for a second video coming out not too long from now. Featuring more of this, more of that, and more of the other, where we attempt to get our viewers to distinguish the difference between their ass and a hole in the ground, if there's any concern about the difference between the two. Also, we'll be looking for some of these areas to possibly turn into sunspots. Look at that area suddenly erupting up there, very far north, as we showed you earlier on the colorized magnetogram. 
Anyway, we're out. Thanks again for tuning in, folks. Remember, when you're staring at the sun, don't drink it. If you drink, stare at the sun anyway. Just don't drive. And since it'll never be now again, may the solar wind be at your back and the atherosclerosis absent. From your face.